All right, let's do this. Welcome to the Legends Podcast. I'm Jeremy. And I'm Dylan. And we're back from the dead. And I know. You might be wondering, where'd the video go? Well, that's because this is going to go straight to iTunes once it goes to YouTube. <coughs> so, Dylan, what have you been doing? Um, you know, things. Well, no shit. Sure. <laughs> this is riveting. Uh, <laughs> been busy, kind of. Work's been picking up. School started again. Um, movement stuff is getting, getting big, a lot of back and forth with twin sons and what we're going to do. And also all the other stuff that I do within the movement. So twin sons was new last time we did the podcast. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Cause that was subject matter we talked about last time. Basically I'll, I'll give an update on this. Um, we posted this on the actual twin sons page. Um, just because uh, it's been a few months since we've heard anything about it. Yes, we're still there. Yes, we're still working on something. There was a lot of ideas that were being thrown back and forth, even when we were creating Twin Sons of what we would do next. We've got it down to a few I or a couple ideas that we're going to do. The problem is that at this point, there is an unknown variable that will determine in which of the which direction we go in, on which campaign we decide to go in for this year. Because of the campaigns that we have, the price range for them, uh, we're well, is a bit high on it. So we figure that we only really have, we are only really going to probably be able to to do one project this year, and what that project will be will to be determined once we know what the unknown variable will be and that unknown variable won't be revealed to our uh, will make itself more clear until about mid-december-ish so we're working on the ideas we have right now to get them ready for december and whichever one we don't pick we'll probably try to do uh, later down the road it'll just get pushed back but we're hoping to have everything in line for the unknown variable to come up and us to decide us to figure out what's it going to be and then we can go forward with our project so uh yes we're working stay tuned it should be mid-december ish and we should have uh, hopefully have more to to share okay now this is also news to me i should should i get into what's happened to me sure i got a girlfriend brag about it it's great dylan to talk to women have you talked to a woman recently at the Tilted Kilt? The what? You know, the the Tilted Kilt that you go to watch soccer at? I watch soccer. I watch uh, baseball, uh, basketball, hockey, pretty much anything. I don't have cable at home, so I'm basically <coughs> forced to watch sporting events at sports bars, and that's just the closest sports bar that there is that'll let me just sit and watch a game as long as I order food every now and then. Tilt and Kilt's the best, dude. But how no. do we go from Star Wars Legends to, to Sports Wars? Like, how? my girlfriend, so, like, <laughs> anyway, um, let's get to into this. Um, I took a step back from the movement. In fact, I pretty much disappeared content wise. I did Horror Month. I don't know if you watched any of that. I don't know if any of you have played a Pokemon, but um, you know how like when you go and you're looking for, and then you there's this really uh, powerful Pokemon, or po Pokemon will come really powerful if you level them up, but every time you try to catch it, it always just teleports away. That's basically what Jeremy's been doing. He's been the Abra of the movement recently, um, just kind of vanishing, um, not knowing where to go. Not knowing where he is, it's just every time we see him, it's like, hey, oh, he's gone. Yeah, I, I work three days a week. I go to school three days a week for 14 units, so it's a little nightmarish. Um, I've only actually, Dylan and I actually only have talked like maybe three times. And maybe. There was maybe one Skype call out of those. Um... It, that's basically with everyone, though. Haven't really talked to anyone at all. Other than through, like, 
Facebook chat and stuff. And even then, I'm barely involved in that now. Mm-hmm. Well, you're more involved in Django. Oh, you mean, Mr. I leave the group chat because of jokes? Yep. But let's not get into that. <laughs> yeah, good God. That was annoying. Um, but I have been reading. It's, that hasn't stopped. Um, mm-hmm. Should we get into what we're reading real quick? Sure. You want to go first since you brought it up? Yeah, because mine's a shorter list. Uh, I've been reading the Mar. I found my Marvel Omnibus. I actually lost that. It went under the bed. And <laughs> I read Marvel Star Wars comics. Let's see. Issues. It got them written down here. Issues 17 through 24. 17's a really good one. I don't know if I talked about this on here or not. I read it a while ago. and It's a one-shot story called Crucible. It's about Luke and Biggs before Biggs leaves to, to go to the Academy. Uh, next uh, up, I know I didn't t- really talk about this, which is issues 18 through 23 are one storyline that involves the wheel, which is something really cool that shows up in the EU periodically. Um, and lastly, this morning I read issue 24, which is an Obi-Wan story that has some continuity issues that I want to talk about. Um, it's about Obi-Wan in the Clone Wars, but he's too old to be in the Clone Wars. So that's a thing. Stay tuned for my review of that when I explain my little retcon for that. I will save that for that review. Um, also, finish Darth Bane Path of Destruction. Everyone needs to read that. It's good to read when you're, when ang- you're angry, angry at someone. <laughs> Twisted. <laughs> It's been so we long since go. we've said that. I know. It's, we can't go a podcast without referencing it. Yeah. Um, let's, let's see. I started a new canon book. Started Battlefront Twilight Company. I've heard mixed reviews from that one. It's not bad. It's entertaining. I wish it was an EU book. That's what I hear. I hear either... It sucks. There's no one in it, or it's a really good side. It's a really good and interesting side story. Those are the two I hear. It reminds me of either, a, yeah. It reminds me of a better Karen Travis book. I mean, it's not the best EU, uh, best Star Wars book I've ever read, but it's it's entertaining because it has it doesn't have movie characters in it. It doesn't have these big characters in it. It's just the grunts. Going through this war, it's a, it's a story that you don't really get much in the EU, especially during that part of the timeline. Well, I'm not even saying it's not EU; it's new canon, right? And I think there's a reason for that, which I'll get to when I get to what I'm currently reading. But mm-hmm. all right, it's your turn. Oh, I don't know where I was exactly. I'll have to. I'll have to rewatch that and I don't remember it's You're been three in Mercy months. But kill. what? You're in Mercy Kill. No, I wasn't at Mercy Kill yet. Or you were at the very end of Fate of the Jedi. I I would I don't know exactly what book I was at, but I know it was at the very end of Fate of the Jedi. Oh no, and we, I'm gonna call, co- we had a Skype call that I'm mixing up with a Legends yeah. podcast because it, yeah. it also it was with Matt. Right, and I talked about my thoughts. So I'm going to go through what I've been reading in in chunks first off i finished fate of the jedi and can i say wow amazing series yes it is a step down from legacy of the force i will admit to that which in itself is a step down from new jedi order i'll agree with matt on that well matt hasn't reviewed those but he's said it personally that's how he thinks of it that it's a little bit of a step down but it is very good it's very entertaining i liked I liked the storyline of it. I liked, I liked the the main storyline. I liked how the characters were portrayed. I liked uh, the plot, um, some of the plot points that were that came up. 
I actually liked the cast of authors uh, better, even though it's made among the same cast. Um, I liked Christy Golding uh, writing the middle slot book better than I liked Karen Travis. And uh, I'll get into that right now. Uh, I told you this in the, the chat, uh, Jeremy, but I felt like with Fate of the Jedi, Karen Travis did a good job with her books. However, they had too much of her in them. Yeah. If that makes sense. That's a uh, complaint in a, with a lot of people. And uh, I remember it perfectly, and this is going to be slight spoilers. Um, so if you haven't read it, turn it uh, but I think I think the main thing from uh, Legacy of the Force, there's two main things that happen that pretty much everyone knows. But in her last book of the series, there is a there is an ongoing subplot of Ben is trying to piece together exactly what is it that happened to his mother. And at the end, he's able to figure it out. He's able to prove it. And he gives the presentation of what happened to his his family, to um, to Luke, to Leia, to Han, and to Jaina. And it's a very powerful scene. It's a very well-written scene. The setup to it is amazing. It's very well done. The problem is that after this happens, after what is like, okay, they know what Jason has become. They know what has to be done in the next book. It's a perfect way to set up to the next book. There's still 30 pages to wrap up what the Mandalorians were doing. And it was interesting. I, I did want to know about the story plots, but it wasn't the way to end that book. It would have been much better to put the Mandalorian stuff first and then hit the Ben stuff. Because, again, it's such a good – and I remember reading it just like, oh, my god, this is, this is getting me pumped for Invincible. This is getting me pumped. And then I get to it, and I get to that, and I'm like, oh, okay. And it kind of died – the hype died down a bit. And I, I think a lot of that was her because the Mandalorians were her thing, were her, um, were her bread and butter. She wanted to get that in there, which is fine, but it detracted from the overall story. Now, Christy Golden in Fate of the Jedi – was a relatively or pretty much a brand new name, and she had her own little uh, niche within the storyline. That being the Lost Tribe, they're first introduced in her novel, the Vestara Kai. I felt like is her character um, because again, she's the one that introduced her, but she goes in the most in depth with it. But that and the storylines that she sets up doesn't detract nearly as much from the main story that Karen Travis does. And I, I just wanted to talk about that briefly because I, because I thought that was a very, that was a very, that was a very big difference, but I did like the series uh, very much. Now, and this is also going to be slight spoilers, but I didn't like how there's a lot of loose ends that are still left untied. And these are kind of major loose ends. Like, there are, there are whole plots. There are major plot points that were brought up in Fate of the Jedi that are that you finish Apocalypse and like, okay, what's going on with those? We, we, still, need, we still need resolution on that. And this is getting into... And it kind of just ended. I thought the ending was great. That was a great way to end the series. I just wish that they had addressed more of that. I wish they would have wrapped up more of it. I like that there were some things that left untied, but I just didn't like that there was so much that was left untied. Now, then I read Mercy Kill, obviously, because that's the next one in the, in the chronology, which was a blast. Um, I love... I loved... The X-Wing series, and especially I love Aaron Olsen. In fact, he is my favorite author of the EU. I haven't read his other stuff, so I can't say favorite overall author, but judging by just his expanded universe stuff, he is my favorite author by far. It was a fun ride. Again, it doesn't – at the end of the day, it's not a very big story, but the way he writes it, it was entertaining. It had some of the old cast from the old Ray Squadron books in it that were main characters. They had people who were – who were the kids of people from the main cast, and it had res and it had a, a where are they now feel where it explains somehow some of the 
characters from the original Rose Squadron either died, because this is like 30 years after the most recent one, so obviously some of them probably have died somewhere in their careers, or what they're doing now. Some characters show up a different cameo for a cameo, so it's just like, hey, here's me, and oh yeah, this <coughs> is my husband, this is my, uh, this is my wife, and we have these kids, and get here to get you out of the situation. Very fun, loved it, highly recommended if you love the um, books. Uh, I would say that Fate of the the only uh, Fate of the Jedi is a bit of a prerequisite to read it, but if you could probably just jump, you could probably jump into Race Squadron Squadron after Starfighters of Adamar, as long as you have a basic understanding of what of the Vong War, the Second Galactic Civil War, and uh, really that's it. But anyway, that was fun. Now we get to Crucible, which. I was I have mixed feelings about because it was an entertaining story. It w- it featured a little bit too much of the big three for my taste. In fact, it felt like it was mainly a big three novel with Ben and Tahiri. And it does tie in to Fate of the Jedi. It it's it does have some of the plot points that are brought up, but they're still not concluded. And that's kind of a spoiler, but this book doesn't really conclude everything. And then it leaves off on the infamous cliffhanger of, okay, the old guard is done. They're retired now. Here's the new kid. Here's the new generation. It's going to go off, and it's going to be great as they're going to carry on the torch. And then the EU then the EU is discontinued. It's such a bad way to end the timeline. And Troy has even said, Troy Denning, who wrote it, has even said if he knew it was going to be the last book, he would have written it differently. But honestly, I would recommend reading Crucible if you have been a if you've been a part of the EU movement for a while now and you're starting to get a little burnt out of it. I think it's a good read just to get that fire back into you. That how can we leave it off like this? Uh, how can we? I, I need to know what happens next. And now, what I'm currently reading, Dawn of the Jedi Into the Void, I'm a, over halfway through it Didn't right now. Didn't you know this is Dark Snovia's favorite book? Really? No. <laughs> I don't uh, watch a lot of this content. Sorry, Dark Snovia. I don't watch a lot of your stuff. No, uh, but... he hyped this up as being like the worst fucking thing humanly possible. Now, he said that Matt didn't like it, and I'm going to take the unpopular opinion and say it's decent. It's wow. not great. We have Matt it's, says that Republic Commando Triple Zero is the second worst Star Wars book he's read. <laughs> and now we have Dylan defending Dawn of the Jedi into the void. Here's the thing uh, about Dawn of the Jedi into the void. It's a <coughs> good story <coughs> it's or it's a it's a decent story i should say um the main character is a is kind of relatable uh, i get what matt was saying because i've seen his i haven't seen dark snow i get what matt's saying of the third person first person jump whenever they do like the the past like in the present she's in third person but in the past she's retelling it as an as if uh or sorry present tense past tense uh, she's retelling it like it's in past tense. I get why that's a, a little jarring, but it didn't really affect me that much. I like that with this book that there's actually like, I don't know, it actually shows the development of time. It, it mentions in the, in the book very early that on her ship she has a flat screen. Not a hollow projector, because hollow projectors are really new and unreliable. And they use swords. There are blast blaster technologies, but it's pretty expensive and most people still use slug throwers. I like that there's, you know, it's just, this is over twenty thousand years before a new hope. I like there's like, okay, the technology is not all the same. We don't have hyperdrives yet. We're basically it's just a loose coalition of planets that are in the Tython system that we know of and there's a bunch of unknown. I like that. What I don't like, and I think that, and what I alluded to earlier of what I was going to talk about, and why I think people don't like this, like this book in general, is that there's not a lot there. 
it's hard in a Star Wars book to to get a non big three, non main story character, non big story story, and make it stick. It's hard to get people invested in a character in a universe that they're not already invested in too. Now, some authors are good at that. Uh, Jeremy, you just read um, Darth Bane trilogy, and almost well, no, the said, first book. The first book, and almost everyone I I talked to has said within like the first twenty pages, you are thoroughly invested in Darth Bane. You are like enthralled with him. Mm-hmm. It's so well written that you immediately care about him. Well, you really. The- there's only a few authors that I think are good at introducing you to a universe. This would be Timothy Zahn, Drew Carpershin, and James Lucino. Mm-hmm. And that's where I think this book suffers. It's not good at introducing you to the characters, and it's not in- good at introducing you to the universe. Because it's basically, there's only two things in this universe. The book, Dawn of the Jedi Into the Void, and 18 issues of... 18 issues of the Dawn of the Jedi comic. And I've read the Dawn of the Jedi comic, and I'm almost halfway through this book, and they do not mix. There is They mentioned the Legions of Letau in this, which is also mentioned in Dawn of the Jedi as something that happens, but there's no overarching threads, so you can go, oh, I remember that from this happened. You can, there's no dots to be connected in this. There's no characters who re-show up. There's no plot points that re-show up. It feels... Sorry, it feels disjointed, and that's why I think it gets a lot of hate because there's not much in this universe. There's not much to get invested in, as well as the characters. But those are that's what I've been reading, and those are my thoughts and everything I've read so far. Uh, since I finished the Road to Crucible, uh, I will be reading uh, the rest of the timeline in chronological order. Though I will be doing a, a bit of a divide. I will be doing a. I will be breaking off from that as soon as I get uh, Junior Jedi Knights, which I found very cheap online. So I'm going to read all of Junior Jedi Knights as soon as I get that. But then from then on out, I'm pretty much going to go through the books in timeline order because I don't want to read all the good books first and have to trudge through uh, the crap. (laughs) (laughs) But, yeah. Yeah. Um... The only other thing we have to talk about besides questions, which I don't even know if there are any, um, oh, there are is we have a Rebel Raid coming up in a few days. Hopefully by the time this comes out. The, hopefully this will edit and be put out on at least on YouTube by tomorrow night. Tomorrow night? Okay. Uh, so yeah, we've got on Tuesday, we've got a uh, social media c- uh, campaign because we're trying to move away from the verbiage of raid because it sounds bad um but it's going to be the same as it always go on the social media sites anywhere that posts about uh the uh new rogue one catalyst or anything that's even remotely pertaining to the expanded universe to ask for more legends do so politely and respectfully uh hit every Hit everywhere you can. Uh, don't engage with anyone that's trying to like be like legend sucks, blah blah blah, or anything like that. It doesn't look good on us. Um, but yeah, we haven't done one in a while because uh, nothing's really come out in a while. And this is gonna be this is gonna be a fairly big one because it's for the prequel novel to the um, movie. Movie. So there's probably gonna be a lot of people, and some even suggested like hinting that. Uh, not only do we raid, but – and this isn't official, but if you want to do this, go ahead um, – to be like, hey, uh, if you want to know what happens with the Death Star plans, you know, you could read this great book called Death Star that goes over it all. Or maybe uh, uh, Dark Forces. Um, if you can get it. If you can get it. <laughs> if you're like me who spent a lot of money. Well, you can also play the game. That's true. That's pretty cheap. Get that on Steam. It's reasonably priced. However, it, unfortunately, like six, the dollars? second game and its expansion are like unplayable. Unplayable because Steam is is terrible, or unplayable? yeah, they never fixed it. Oh, okay. Otherwise, I'd be like, yeah, let's play this. This looks awesome. It's got <laughs> live action cutscenes. That was one with live action cutscenes. What was the other one? Uh, what, which Rebel Jedi Assault had- Two. 
Rebel Assault 2. That's the one that's infamous because they're horribly acted. (laughs) But George Lucas produced it. Hmm. Like, directly. Like, he was really involved in Rebel Assault 2. But Dark Forces 2, in my opinion, has... It has bad acting, but it also has some good acting in there. So, yeah. Um, well, why don't we get into questions? I just had it up, too. Okay. Um, Are you shitting me, Dylan? Okay. Uh, I'm going to save uh, Darth Riddlers for last so we can rifle through them. Mm-hmm. Um channel uh okay if you were if you were in charge of dave filoni's clone wars what would you do to make the show fit in the existing stories that take place during the clone wars era this is from chris galushi i think i'm butchering your name i'm sorry about that um but I, yeah I, I didn't talk about this i'm re-watching clone wars again i'm almost done with season one uh huh. Nothing. I would just consider it infinities. <laughs> here's my here's my suggestion. Uh make it two seasons. Because I think that uh of the Clone Wars, Dave Filoni had about two good two seasons worth of good stories. It's less to manage. It'd be less to manage, it'd be less to continuity check, um less to anime, so you can spend more time on that. And uh, another YouTuber who is uh, – he isn't really act- – he wasn't really active on his YouTube with the movement, but he's active within the movement. Um, pointed it out that in, in one of his uh, uh, rant, uh, rants about lightsaber combat that uh, for, all it, for all the terrible continuity things that the Clone Wars did in its storytelling, it was actually very true to form with how different Jedi were actually presented – and in their combat abilities with their lightsaber forms. It was actually very true to keep that the styles consistent to what they're supposed to be using according to their forms, um, which is something I never noticed until he pointed out. And rewatching those scenes, I'm like, yeah, you can definitely tell that's a Makshi, that's an Ataru, yeah, that's, yeah. So it's it's got that. But I would say trim it down, trim it down to the two seasons, because that's probably about as good, that's how many good stories he had in general, and just work with that. Anyway. Yeah. What's next? Uh, next is Darth Riddler's um, novel. I mean, um, okay. In the um, Star Wars Expanded Universe, which side do you feel more sympathetic towards, the Jedi or the Sith? Well, it's sympathetic? Yeah. The Jedi, but the Sith are more interesting. Yeah. Because the Jedi get hated a lot. Especially, I mean, you read Fate of the Jedi, and oh my gosh. The anti-Jedi sentiment in Fate of the Jedi is astounding at this point. Like, you're literally going like, how can you people hate the Jedi so much when they're literally the only reason the galaxy wasn't taken over by the Vong? Mm -hmm. That was less than ten years ago, and you all hate them. Unbelievable. But, yeah. What's I don't know. Yeah. Uh, two, do you really believe Darth Sidious is really the most powerful Sith in galactic history, in your opinion? Why or why not? He's the most powerful because he got his... He got what all the Sith wanted. Control over the galaxy. I'd argue that Vitiate is probably more powerful because Vitiate was essentially immortal. Yeah, but the thing is, Sidious was practically immortal as well. Dark Empire. Through his clones, yes, but his... Well, I guess we could <coughs> also use the body um, switching thing to stay immortal. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think in a straight-up fight, it would be interesting between those two, but it's definitely between those two, Vician and Sidious. Yeah. Do you believe Destiny will eventually do what they're doing with the MCU and release, uh, or Disney, sorry, not Destiny. I was really like, what? 
Do you think Disney will eventually do what they're doing with the MCU and release more than one Star Wars movie a year? Probably because they just want to milk this thing for all this worth. Yeah, and they will kill it really quick. If they do that. There's more longevity. I think they can get more movies out of it if they stagger them out year by year. But who knows what they'll do. Yeah. Uh, fourth question. In your opinion, when did you feel like the golden age of Star Wars started, and when did you feel like it ended? The golden age. To me, I go by the comic standard of golden age. And to me, that would be the Brian Daly Han Solo books, the L. Neil Smith Lando books, Splinter of the Mind's Eye, everything up until... Uh, Midwest End Games before Zahn's books. And Zahn's books, to me, are the Silver Age because uh, the, the Bantam era is the Silver Age because, like the Silver Age of comics, things got toned down, meaning no one really died in the Bantam books. Everyone got kidnapped, um, which got really annoying after a while. Um, Dylan, what about you? I'm going to say it was, um, I'm going to say it was the prequel era, 1999 to 2005. And here's why. I think, I think it was a golden age for all fans. Now, despite what people say now, when they came out, the prequels were immensely popular. Mm -hmm. Uh, the hate for the prequels started around 2007, 2000, uh, years, a few years after it. But the prequels were very well, well received when they first came out. Fans were, loved the prequels. But the reason that I call it the Golden Age from all sides is because you got to look at what was coming out at the time. In the adult novels, you had New Jedi Order, which almost anyone will tell you is probably the pinnacle of the Star Wars uh, novels. While at the same time, you had the young adult books, the Jedi Princess series coming out, which is some of the best of the young adult books. Then the comics, meanwhile, are doing the uh, first wave of the Clone of the uh, the Clone Wars multimedia project, where they're doing the uh, Republic, all the uh, comics that Matt is reviewing right now. Who who is like when Dark Horse is really who or the only really ones that did the Clone Wars, any sort of justice at all. You had every single aspect of Star Wars media was producing solid content, and people were loving it. So I would say for that reason, that would be the Golden Age. Now, each now for, if you're going to go Silver Age, I think that each, uh, each medium had their own Silver Age. Now, movies medium obviously being when the original trilogy was, out, was uh, coming out. Uh, the novels during the Bantam run and then um, during the Bantam run and the comics, probably uh, right after that, 2000 to 2007 or 8, when they had Legacy and KOTOR and all those comics that were all coming out around the same time. Mm -hmm. You see, I consider all New Jedi Order and the prequels the Bronze Age because no one was safe. <laughs> and the Bronze Age of comics begins with the death of Gwen Stacy. Sort of, you know. <laughs> I just I just do it that way. That's good. And if my phone would actually stop turning off. Okay, there we go. Five. This question is more relevant if you've seen Rogue One, but if you have seen it at the time you guys finally do a new Legends podcast, what are your thoughts on the movie? It's not out yet. Joke's on you, Dark Snowbia. We actually got our act together in three months, not ten months, and actually did this. You mean um, four months? It comes out next month. Four months? Okay. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever. I don't even follow it. I don't even know when it comes out. All right, six. What is your favorite and least favorite era of the Star Wars Expanded Universe? Favorite era? <sighs> Fuck. Dylan, go first. Least favorite is easy, Dawn of the Jedi, because there's absolutely nothing in that era. There's one novel and three six issue minis of comics, and they don't connect together. Best? 
I'm going to say Legacy. The Legacy era. Post-New Jedi Order to um, the Legacy comics. Okay. Um, least favorite gotta be stereotypical go down of the Jedi as well because not enough content. Best era, Rise of the Empire. Because that's when all the building blocks go into place that affect everything afterwards. Hmm. All right. Um, number seven, what do you believe is the best place to shop for Star Wars Expanded Universe comics and novels in your opinion? I don't think it's a place. I just think it's the internet in general. Well, name some websites, then. Um, eBay is probably going to be your best bet for finding everything. Amazon would be your best bet if quality is important to you, and if you actually want to ensure that you're probably going to see something that comes in. Though the 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 pickings are going to be a little bit more slim, especially on the rare, mm -hmm. on the rare sites if you go the Amazon route. Uh, where else can you get stuff? Uh, in stock trades was where I got a lot of my trades when I was finishing up things. That's starting to get a little slim, though. Um, if you want to get the Marvel Epic collections at a really good price, though, go get them off of in stock. Same with these Marvel omnibuses, get them off of in stock. Um, eBay, eBay's where I go usually. Actually, a lot of times lately, I find things at thrift stores. <laughs> <coughs> like that Empire Strikes Back hardcover I just bought. That I got that at a thrift store. Hey, I find uh, I found Star Wars Insider number uh, fifty-seven. Was it fifty-seven? I gotta look. Um, it's the one that had the fight saber article in it. I found that is at a thrift store. So yeah, I've been seeing a lot of Bantam books show up. In thrift stores in my area lately. Uh, also check used bookstores too. Those are yeah. great places to find stuff. Last time I was at a used bookstore, I picked up The Approaching Storm. Or in even hardcover. your library. Because even most libraries have a store now that they give away books that don't do well. And unfortunately, sometimes they're Star Wars books. but You'll find your crystal stars in there. Yeah, you'll find your crystal stars and... Um, your Waru for presidents. Oh, poor Waru. Rip the dream. Can we all take a moment of silence for uh, Waru's um, uh, defeats? Hold up, I have something I'm going to queue up for Waru. Feels bad. Feels bad. I mean, even Harambe gets more votes than Waru. Here. Is this going to take away monetization? <laughs> this is horrible quality. You can't see this because we no longer record video, but I'm currently saluting right now. I'm crying. Like those Hillary Clinton supporters. I mean, what? He was, he was going to make all of our dreams come true. He was going to make, build a wall around Disneyland and make Bob Iger pay for it. But alas, the dream is dead. Hard stop. Matt, you uh, are the other Matt. They're not the... the there's too many Mats. Attic. The Geeks Attic. You have a... <sighs> hate to say this, but... You were right. Asshole. You ruined it all. Rip the dream. But... There's still 20... There's still 2020. Yeah. All right, do we have anyway. more novels? What? Do we have more from this novel? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, do
do I have to accept the Clone Wars is canon because I don't want to? Well, it is technically canon in both canons. But if you're talking about the Legends canon, uh, Fantasy Flight says anything that contradicts is made up Imperial propaganda. So, yes and no. Yeah. Next. That's it. That's it? Are we done? Yeah. Oh, thank you for listening to the New Legends podcast. That's all. Sponsored by Comcast.